Released on October 14th of 1995, Wizards of the Coast debuted the 13th set of the Magic the Gathering franchise. Named Homelands, this was the seventh expansion and started out as the second expansion of the Ice Age block until October of 2005 with the announcement of the Cold Snap expansion. Homelands was considered to be a low-powered set in comparison to previously released sets. Very little communication with designers of the different sets led to the expansion being poorly designed and having strong differences with Ice Age and Alliances. The set symbol for Homelands was the planet. Homelands did not introduce any new themes or mechanics, but it did include one full cycle. That cycle were the tricolor lands, which were uncommon lands that could be tapped to add one colorless mana, tapping one other land along with the tricolor land to add a particular color to your mana pool, or tap two mana and itself to add one choice of one of the colors listed on the card. The tricolor lands were Ice and Abbey, Wizard School, Castle Senger, Cost and Keep, and on Hava Township. The storyline of the set takes place on the plain of Olgrotha during the war between the Tallgroth and the Ancients. The Tallgroth are the planeswalkers who seek the knowledge of the Ancients. The Ancients are the wizards of Olgrotha who plan to defend their so-called mysteries. The Tallgroth planeswalker Ravi used an artifact given by her master called the Apocalypse Chime to destroy all mana and life on the planet. Olgrotha became a battleground for wizards until the arrival of the planeswalker Pharos, who wished to protect the land along with the other planeswalker, Sarah. They created Pharos's ban, which kept out other planeswalkers out of Olgrotha. Pharos and Sarah would later become husband and wife, but Pharos died in one of his failed experiments, studying a fire elemental trapped in ice. Sarah, grief stricken by the loss of her husband, allows herself to be killed by a common mugger who is trying to steal her wedding ring. Many years later, after the death of Pharos and Sarah, the Pharos' band became weaker and the civilizations of the plain declare war amongst each other. Meanwhile, the vampire Baron Sanger is planning to take over Olgrotha under the weakened Pharos' band. There are 115 total cards in the set, which contain 25 commons such as Feast of the Unicorn and Aether Storm, 47 uncommons such as Sanger Autocrat and Ghost Hounds, and 43 rares such as Primal Order and Winter Sky. Homelands was also the last set to have eight card booster packs. There were six notable cards in the expansion set. The first card was Apocalypse Chime, which was an artifact card that read, pay two mana and tap, sacrifice Apocalypse Chime to bury all cards from the Homelands expansion. Next was Serrated Arrows, which was an artifact card that read, Serrated Arrows comes into play with three arrowhead counters on it. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you have no arrowhead counters on Serrated Arrows, sacrifice it, tap. Remove an arrowhead counter from serrated arrows. Put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Ison Shade was a black legendary creature with five power and five toughness that had protection from white. Temerian Fiends was a black one power, one toughness creature, which read, remove Temerian Fiends from your deck before playing it if you're not playing for anti. Pay three black mana. Sacrifice Temerian Fiends. The owner of target artifact may anti the top card of his or her library. If that player doesn't, exchange ownership of that artifact into Marian Fiends. Put the artifact card into your graveyard and to Marian Fiends from anywhere into that player's graveyard. This change in ownership is permanent. Next is a blue instant spell called Memory Lapse, which says counter target spell. If that spell is countered this way, put it on top of its owner's library instead of into that player's graveyard. The last notable card was Merchant Scroll, which was a blue sorcery spell that stated, search your library for a blue instant card, reveal that card, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. A sealed booster box of Homelands is worth around $170. So that is all we have today for this episode of Card Anthology. Please let us know in the comments what your favorite card was, what your worst card was, what kind of strategy you're running, or what other crazy shenanigans were going on during this time. We always like to know the opinions of our viewers and subscribers every time they watch an episode of Card Anthology. If you enjoyed this video and if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to the channel. Visit us on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash carbazar361. Also follow us on Twitter at carbazarcc. If you also missed out on our last episode over Chronicles, click on the link below in the description. Thank you for all the continued support of the channel. This is Coach signing out. We will see you guys next time at the Card Bazaar.